Hanggang umaga po. Welcome sa programang Bawal ang Pikon! Yes, sir! Yes, Good, good. Well rehearsed, ha? Ah. Ay, so. Ang bisita po natin ngayong umaga, kalihim po ng isang opisina ng hindi ko alam kung ano. <laughs> ang dami! Oh, dahil uh, ang dami niya hong responsibility. Kung ang isang kagawaran po o agency na nakatuon lamang sa particular na gawain, eh, minsan talagang napakahirap na nung kanyang responsibilidad. Eh, alam nyo, ang mandato ni... Ano kaya ang itsura ngayon? Dahil alam nyo po, hindi lang ho isang opisina, hindi lang not only one, not only two, not only three. <laughs> ang dami ho eh. Hindi ko nga kabisado yung kung ano-ano yung mga opisina na... na hindi ko kabisado. Honestly, kailangan kong basahin lagi paulit-ulit. Basta natatandaan ko lang yung mga may kagalit siya. Sa NFA, sa ano. <laughs> Tingnan natin. Naku, medyo. Ang tinutukoy po natin ngayon dito ay Office of the Cabinet Secretary. Office of the Cabinet Secretary. Suporta ang ibinibigay nito sa Pangulo ng Bansa sa pamamagitan ng malinaw na pagpapalitan ng mga impormasyon sa pagitan ng iba't ibang kalihim ng kagawaran ng pamahalaan. Tinututukan din ng opisinang ito ang maayos na pagpapatupad ng makabuluhang proyekto ng gobyerno. Ang pinuno naman ng opisina ay naatasan ng ilang responsibilidad. Kabilang dito, ang tumayong kinatawan ng Pangulo sa mga pagpupulong ng mga ahensyang naglalayong magampanan ang mga tungkuli nito. Sa bisa ng Executive Order No. 1 ni President Rodrigo Duterte, isinailalim din sa Office of the Cabinet Secretary ang mga gampaning pangasiwaan ang mga ahensyang katulad ng Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council, National Anti-Poverty Commission, National Commission on Indigenous People, National Food Authority, National Youth Commission, Office of the President, Presidential Action Center, Technical Education Skills Development Authority o TESDA, at ang National Irrigation Authority. Sa dami ng mga obligasyon, paano kaya ito tinututukan ng naturang opisina? May sapat kaya itong pondo at bilang ng mga kawani? At may sapat ba itong kapangyarihan upang kumpasan ang kada ahensya at kagawaran upang mapanatiling nasa iisang direksyon ang kanilang galaw sa pagpapatupad ng mga pangako at plano ng ating Pangulo? Thank you. Alamin po natin ang mga kasagutan sa mga bagay na yan. Pati na ho yung mga gusto nating liwanagin na, na iba't ibang mga usapin. Let's welcome to the program, Cabinet Secretary Leoncio June Evasco Jr. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, salamat sa pagpapaunlak. Nasa lakab din kita. <laughs> After quite a long time. Kusta na po kayo? Okay naman, uh, ka Daniel. Kaway ba kayo ni Bongo? I don't think so. Ah, hindi naman. Hindi naman We hindi belong naman. to the same family. Ah, okay. But so, sometimes people of the same uh, uh, family, eh, they also fight. Uh, I don't think there is an opportunity for us to fight. Ah, wala naman. Because wala naman. Uh, we have different sets of uh, obligations, mm -hmm. responsibilities within the office of the president. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is just to coordinate and, co coordinate and cooperate with what the President is ordering us to do. Mm, si uh, Aquino ba ng uh, NFA, gusto niyo ng palitan? Mm, wala pa namang batayan na palitan. Wala pa naman. And secondly, he is a presidential appointee. Mm -hmm. so It is he only the, the President who can uh, decide whether to... Uh, terminate, mm -hmm. to let him continue mm -hmm. his job at the uh, National Food Authority. Do you work well with him, Pope? Well, my working relationship with him is only at the time when I call on the National Food Authority Council, mm -hmm. where I am the presiding officer. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of implementing what had been discussed, at the council sa yan. Sa yan. Mm -hmm. except that there are complaints which would warrant that this complaint should be discussed at the council. Mm -hmm. So, 
ngayon, uh, pero nasa ilalim, under ninyo siya ang NFA. Under. Under under, it's not under me personally, okay. but under siya ng council. Ah, okay. Of which okay. I'm the presiding officer as the chairman. Of as the, the chairman of the council. Ano ba, may pangangailangan ba talaga tayong mag-angkat ng bigas o wala? Kasi uh, dati, sinasabi, wala. Uh, nag nagkakaiba nga kayo eh. Sabi niya, wala. Kayo meron. Ngayon, lumilitaw, tatlong araw na lang yata yung stock natin. Uh, pang tatlong araw na lang yung bigas natin. Ano po ba ang totoo? Ganito. Since time immemorial, mm -mm. the Philippines has never achieve what we consider as self-sufficiency program mm. of rice. Mm -hmm. The farmers in our country produce not enough rice to feed our people, especially a growing population. Mm -hmm. So since time immemorial, we have been buying rice from outside. Mm -hmm. But there are what we call modes of procurement mm -hmm. in buying rice. Mm -hmm. As provided for by 9184, the mm -hmm. uh, Procurement Act. But unfortunately, in the past, ang palaging ginagamit yung G2G. Mm -hmm. Government to government uh, uh, procurement. Mm -hmm. Where it is a product of a negotiation between one go our government and other government which supplies rice mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Well, I, I cannot say outrightly na ito, uh, mayroong corruption. But mm. such procurement mode is prone to corruption. Mm -hmm. Because it is a product of negotiation. Yes. Usap-usapan lang natin ito eh. And it's... it's uh, Hindi bidding. Ano? Ah, hindi bidding. Okay. So, this time, because the President has ordered not just only me, but all government functionaries to stay away from corrupt practices. Yes. So, Ginano namin yung procurement ngayon mm -hmm. na hindi na yung G2G unless it is very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. But it should be a product of a very intense deliberation at the council where there is a necessity for us to procure rice to government to government. Because Who decides on that po? It's the council. It's, it's the council. It's, it's the council. It's the council. So, because at, at the council, <clears throat> the members of the council are... First, the NEDA, mm -hmm. which gets its information and uh, other other data from the Philippine uh, Statistics Authority. Mm -hmm. Then we have also another member uh, who happens to be the Department of Finance, where the uh, where Department of Finance has all the necessary data that will tell us whether we do have the money mm -hmm. to purchase. Uh, rice to be mm -hmm. used in the purchasing of rice from outside. Mm -hmm. We have also the DTI. We have also the land bank. We have also the Department of Trade and, and, uh, and Industry as member. We have also another member from DBP. And above all, we do have a member coming from the Organization of Farmers mm -hmm. sitting down in that council mm -hmm. so that we can also be brief on the situation of the farmers, especially re regarding the harvest, how, how the quantity of harvest at a given time, mm -hmm. so that purchases of rice from outside should always reflect on the interest of the farmers. Mm -hmm. Kasi kung maraming pinupurchase mo, definitely, hindi, ma, hindi mabenta yung, ano, yung mga yung produkto lokal. ng mga lokal. Mm -hmm. Neither, we should buy also less than what the, uh, the farmers produce. Mm -hmm. Dahil akyat yung presyo ng bigas sa market. Mm -hmm. So, it is really a balancing act on the part of the council whether to purchase rice and how much we have to purchase rice. Mm -hmm. So, ngayon po, ano ang estado nito? Uh, ano po ang decision ng council ngayon dito? Well, in fact, we succeeded in having it bid out. Ang mm -hmm. tawag na namin dito ngayon is G2P. Okay. We still have to buy from outside. As I've said, the production of the farmers uh, regarding rice it's not enough, so we get to buy from outside. Mm -hmm. But this time, it should be through bidding. Okay. Kaya, we have to buy from uh, from the traders from outside of our country. Mm -hmm. So ito yung G2P. In fact, the uh, approved budget budget uh, selling was five billion. Mm -hmm. Now we only used the money. We only expended uh, three point five. 
Mm-hmm. Because it was forbidding. <coughs> we always bid. We should mm-hmm. always win. Mm-hmm. Kaya, we purchased the 250,000 uh, metric tons. And now it's coming in mm-hmm. to our country. Mm-hmm. Uh, in consideration of uh, the uh, time where there is no harvest. Mm-hmm. And in times also that there, we are expecting calamities, typhoon, because it's typhoon month. Now, we are now also preparing for another mode of uh, mode of procurement, which is what we call the mob. Minimum access volume. Mm-hmm. Where our <coughs> traders in our country are given the, uh, the opportunity to purchase rice from outside. But they have to be they have to be accredited by NFA. Mm-hmm. They've got to get what we call the certificate of uh, of uh, importation. importation. Opo. Uh, uh, yan, uh, isa din sa mga butas at sinasabing dati na daan ng corruption. Yung yeah. mga certificate uh, of importation. Uh, yan. Yung import permits. Import permits. Mm. Kasi, ano eh, i-roll man lang yan. Mm. <laughs> Kumusta so, po ngayon? Paano natin nakokontrol ngayon ito? That could only be controlled with the uh, strict cooperation mm-hmm. and coordination with the Bureau of Customs. Mm-hmm. Because so, they're the ones manning the ports. Mm-hmm. So, so ngayon, nakikita we, niyo po ba medyo mabigat pa rin ang problema natin with smuggling? Of course. Mm-hmm. Kasi marami naman talaga ano, eh, yung may mga tao dito sa atin na very, very enterprising. Mm-hmm. Not just only to make money, but to make fast money mm-hmm. at that. Mm-hmm. Ang under po ng uh, Office of the Cabinet Secretary ay uh, i- ilang agency nga po ng Department of Agriculture yung sa, D- sa DA lang muna, lima ba yun nasa inyo, nasa ilalim? Dalawa. Dalawa. Uh, NFA Nia. at saka... Uh, NFA... Ah, uh, tatlo. Uh, NFA, uh, NIA, and PCA. That is the Philippine Coconut, Coconut Authority, Authority. Where I sit as the chair of the board. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, sa Philippine, uh, Philippine Coconut, Coconut Authority. Authority. At saka NIA. Oh, totoo bang gusto nyo napalitan din yung nasa Philippine Coconut Authority? Napalitan na eh. Ah, napalitan na. Okay. Oh. Now, if we have to to change, there must be basis why it should be changed, mm-hmm. or he should be changed, mm-hmm. or the chairman, no, the administrator should be changed. But mm-hmm. we have to submit mm-hmm. our report to GCG. That is mm-hmm. the management over the GOCC. Why were you not happy with the, uh, the PCA administrator before? Well, There had been so many reports, and aside from that, it was a documented reports on corruption. Ah, uh, okay. Pa- pa- pero kinasuhan ba? Ah, uh, ganito. Ah, uh, wala namang kaso, but first we'll get to submit all of this report to GCG. Mm-hmm. For us to justify that the board can now select and recommend to the president an administrator. Mm-hmm. Pero yung basis po ninyo nun, eh, documented. Documented. Okay, if it is documented, then pwede, pwedeng gamitin din to build up a case. Of course. Uh, but uh, sino po ang mag initiate nung pag-build up ng case sa pagkaganon? Kasi mm-hmm. uh, if we just let go of something that we know is uh, somehow eh, dapat ay uh, na, nakakasuhan, uh, parang, uh, parang baliwala na lang. Okay, people will just go after that. Wala na. Ang nangyari sa kanila. Hindi ganito. Uh, in fact, uh, we have not yet received the response from GCG. Okay. So it's still an interim uh, arrangement right now mm-hmm. with uh, with the one that was recommended by the board mm-hmm. to uh, assume that responsibility being an administrator of PCA. Sino nga po ngayon ang administrator? Uh, Yung bago dito na amin na, na, I mean, ni-recommend is uh, Mr. Billy De La Rosa mm-hmm. from Kamigen. Mm-hmm. But he used to work with an international NGO And he did a very intense study on the coconut industry in our country. Mm-hmm. When, in fact, when he took his uh, master's in UK, mm-hmm. United Kingdom, um, his thesis was on the coconut industry. Sino po acting ngayon? Siya na? Si, si Mr. De La Rosa. Siya na mismo ang uh, nag-a-acting. Uh, Sino nga po yung pinalitan niya? Si Mr. Abilino Andal. Abilino Andal. Abilino Andal. Yun yung uh, meron kayo nakitang uh, hindi magandang uh, ginagawa. Uh, uh, kaya alam, pero wala pang kaso. Wala pa, wala pa. Oh. Eh, ma- masaya naman ho ba kayo sa paano ngayon pinapatakbo ang NIA, National Irrigation Authority? I think it's under, new, under, under new ni uh, General Bisaya. 
Mm-hmm. Because Nia also is, uh, the management is also confronted of so many reports of anomalies in the past. Mm-hmm. In fact, I found it out personally. Mm-hmm. Yan sa mga program of work. Which is now being addressed. Being addressed. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's being addressed because mm-hmm. we will not address that. Then we will be in complexity with what happened in the past which is subject to Uh, which could be subject to a scrutiny of COA, and mm-hmm. thereby we will be charged at mm-hmm. the ombudsman. So, yun ba yung talaga naging problema ni Pete Lavinia? Uh, ganon din yan. Uh, mm-hmm. Marami diyang mga problema. problema yung... mm-hmm. But kaibigan nyo din si Pete, hindi ba? Kaibigan ko si Pete. Uh, oh. He's from Davao. Uh, we work together y- y- in the city ba, government. Yung ba, ano ba talaga, na-involve ba siya talaga sa corruption? I would rather not discuss this matter on the air. Mm, oh, pero ah, kumusta na siya ngayon? May balita okay na naman. Ah, as I told Jerry earlier, mm. an opportunity closed is also an opportunity open to him. Mm. I think he is doing well. Oh, eh, yung hum, uh, NFA, happy naman, ay, happy naman kayo sa administrador ngayon. Well, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, somebody's got to implement what the council has decided on. Yes. Now, if he just follow what the council wants him to do, whether you like it or not, you should have to support him on that. Mm-hmm. No, unless, but it's a, it's a different thing if you have the trust also <laughs> dun sa administrator. Kasi implementation is well, something that is, uh, ano din yan eh, di ba? Uh, very, uh, kumbaga, demanding yan when it comes to dedication and yung trust that you're giving the one who's administering Ganun it. Ganun naman talaga yan, uh, Ka Daniel. You have to trust somebody. Otherwise, if you cannot trust somebody, why don't you? Why, why, why will you work with him? No, but do you trust your administrator in anything? Of course, I have to trust him on that. Mm-hmm. Kasi otherwise... Kasi iba naman yung ang tiwala ay nagtiwala sa kanya, presidente, kesa yung kayo. Otherwise, I have no business in working with him. Mm-hmm. Or he, has, he doesn't have any business working but with you. I, I, Dalawang I, bagay lang. Yeah, yan. kaya nga, it's two way. Mm-hmm. I trust him, he trust me. Mm-hmm. So that there will be some kind of a very moral uh, mm-hmm. leadership in that agency. Mm-hmm. Kasi kaya, may nagsabi sa akin, kaya nyo lang daw hindi matanggal, malakas sa presidente. Mm, lahat naman talaga malakas sa presidente. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be appointed, hindi ka malakas sa presidente. Oh, sa, sa bagay. So, no? Presidente naman will appoint somebody if he thinks that somebody can help him out. Pero may sinabi na ba kayo, may sinumbong na ba kayo sa presidente na pwede ba tanggalin na to? Hindi man na, hindi ko hindi ko type yan na na skill magsumbong ng president. I've got to follow the procedure. Mm-hmm. Yung procedure dito is for me if I have something uh, if I see something in the persons working with me, I've got to report to the president to the, to the president through GCG. Uh-huh. And GCG will now have to make the report to the president. But you were very close sa presidente mula pa no, nasa tatlong dekada na halos kayong magka... <laughs> kasi uh, binabasa ko yung istorya ninyo and uh, some of it I know dahil uh, noong mayor pa kayo, eh, tayo naman, we also work hand in hand uh, doon sa in- inyong lugar, pati na ng... Uh, ngayon ba magkasama na kayo ng asawa nyo? Uh, we are staying here at... Uh, Kasi iniwana, iniwana niyo asawa niyo sa... Sa Dabao? Sa Dabao eh. Tapos... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just get to follow. Ngayon, okay na. O, o, okay na. Pero sa three decades na magkasama kayo ng presidente, very close kayo, nakakapag-usap kayo talaga. Eh. Every time gusto nyo makausap presidente. Pero ang balita ko ngayon, parang hirap na hirap kayong kausapin ng presidente. Totoo ba yan? Bago nyo sagutin, we'll pause for a break. Babalik po kami. <laughs> Ito ang programang Bawal ang Pigon! Yes, sir! Maganda epekto ng kape sa inyo. Uh, kape pa, kape pa. Kape pa more. Oh. Nasama po natin Secretary Leoncio June Vasco Jr., Cabinet Secretary, who is very close to the President. Uh, tatlong dekada na daw. Pero parang balita ako, totoo ba na ngayon? Parang... Kailangan nyo pa rin pumila at mukhang hirap na hirap din kayong kausapin ng presidente. Ganun naman talaga eh. Maliit lang yung uh, siyudad ng Davao. Mm-hmm. So we have more time to talk that, that uh, During those times. You can mm-hmm. access anytime you would want. Mm-hmm. But this time, it's the Philippines. 
Nandiyan yung mga foreigners who want to talk to the president. Nandiyan yung mga negosyante who want to talk to the president. Nandiyan yung mga mayors, nandiyan yung mga governors who want to talk to the president. So, ako naman, if I do right, if I think what I am doing is right, unless there are some problems, then I've got to talk to him. Ganun naman talaga eh. Pero have you had any experience na gusto niyo siya makakausap, nahirapan kayong kausapin? Maminsan mahirapan ka talaga because there are priorities which the President also follows. Yes, but anong June, alam naman natin, di ba? Presidente ka. Pag gusto ko itang kausapin, o pag nakarating sa akin, alimbawa, na oh, Mr. President, gusto kayo makakausap ni Secretary June Basco. Oh, oh, pasawa mo, papasawa ko. Madaling gawin yun eh. Kung nalaman niya. Maliba na lang kung nai-screen kayo sa baba. Nai-screen ka na din po ba? I have no, I have no idea about screening. But do you somehow feel that you are also being boxed out? I know, I know that there are times when you cannot just access the president. Because of some urgent matters that he has got to attend to. You have to respect that. You believe that? Of course. Otherwise, I would be staying with in that uh, office. No, no, no. Ang, ang sa akin po, yung kasi pag nakarating sa presidente, na niya si Manong Jun sa balabas, uh, uh, gusto kang uh, makausap. Uh, I can do a lot of things para kung nalaman ko. Uh, kung nalaman uh, ko. I, I also manage Manong Jun eh. I mean, I also have people down below who sometimes do not tell me that somebody is looking for me. Or if they don't like that person to reach me, sometimes they will just say, ah, ano, busy, may kausap. Tapos only to find out later, oh, nandiyan pala siya, ba't di mo sinabi sa akin? Wala na, nakaalis na. Di ba may ganun? Ako naman eh, I'm very, very creative in uh, accessing the president. Oh, okay, okay. You can access the president personally. Mm -hmm. But if not... Na te text niyo pa buka? Oh, text man po. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, uh, you can access through the executive secretary. Mm -hmm. Kasi ako din, I am also beleaguered mm -hmm. on so many responsibilities that I cannot just wait. Mm -hmm. Bakit ba kayo mahirap mahagilap? Parang hindi kayo <laughs> nagpapa-interview sa media. Swerte nga ako, pinuntahan niyo ako. Pero... Balita ako, talagang hirap kayong hagilapin. Hindi, Mabuti ganito. na lang, malakas si Jerry pangulan sa inyo. <laughs> may, may utang ko dyan. <laughs> oh, ba, 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 nagtatago ba kayo sa media? Hindi naman. Alam mo, if it has something to do with national, national developments, mm -hmm. uh, things that confront the presidency, mm -hmm. there is the spokesman. Okay. I am not the spokesman. I'm not paid to be the spokesman, the president. Mm -hmm. So interview the spokesman, mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Kasi inagawan ko yung trabaho ng spokesman. Eh. Mm -hmm. Hindi, pero dun oh. po sa mga ilan yung uh, nasa ilalim ninyo, no. dami. Uh, cooperat labing tatlo, Cooperative Development Authority. Tapos yung isa, nadali ka pa. National Commission on Indigenous People, binibigyan lang ng piso. <laughs> O, oh, buti nga, binalik na nga ngayon. Ano po ba nangyayari doon? Hindi, ganito. Hindi ko naman tatanong yung spokesperson niya dyan, ha? Siyempre, mas De, gusto ko tanongin kayo. It something to do with agencies yes. under me. Sabihin ko naman eh, mm -hmm. I am not the administrator. Aha. So, so papasa niyo na naman sa administrator. Uh, kasi he knows better. Okay. He knows a lot of things. How an agency or his agency is being confronted with so many problems. But your administrator must always report to you. Not to, at times. To, to at least give you an idea on what he is doing with the agency. I will, I will be confronted with a lot of reports on certain uh, agency or oh yeah, certain agency under me mm -mm. during the time when there is a board meeting, a council meeting mm -hmm. that discusses on the mm, the programs, uh, you are, dapat problems, dapat the problems. So, generally, I would know okay. what are the things confronting an agency. But, to but the, the details, details yes, I yes. would rather have. So, the ano, ano pong report sa inyo naging problema? Bakit biglang ginanon yung indigenous uh, people ano, commission? Well, as I've said, You cannot expect everybody or sectors to to be happy with you. 
to like yes, you yes. and to support you. Mm -hmm. There will be always people who would reserve their own prerogative whether to accept what, what you're telling him or not. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. just refuse to accept. Uh -huh. Alam niya na tama yung question. I just would not accept that. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Sarado isip. Now, the NCIP, that is the National Commission in Indigenous People, has something mm -hmm. to do with our, our own people mm -hmm. in the countrysides. Mm -hmm. Ito yung mga tribo, ito yung mga nitibo. Tawag natin nitibo. Tawag natin na uh, indigenous people. Mm -hmm. Sa Mindanao, tawag natin dito mga lumad. Mm -hmm. Mga lumad. Now, there are some people who are not happy with how things are being done. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the Makabayan Black is not happy with what the NCIP because the NCIP to them does not respond to the needs of our people in the countryside, particularly the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. Something to do with uh, the schools run by, run by the IPs and these are being threatened by the military and they are accusing the NCIP of not protecting the IPs. Mm -hmm. And in the NCIP naman, nagsabi na it's not ours because these are schools and they should be under the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. So, ito yung nagiging reason na bakit nagposisyon ang makabayan block mm -hmm. na 1,000 a year lang ang budget. Pero paano po ba yun? Ano ba talaga ang uh, role na ginagampanan ng NCIP? Uh, ano ba dapat talaga po ang nababantayan nila? Kasi parang minsan, may, dun sa ibang aspeto, mayroong mga overlapping eh. Di overlapping ba? talaga. Oh, dun sa ibang eh. And kailangan pa ba natin itong NCIP o pwede nang wala yan? There should be an NCIP. But so ano po ang main role niya dapat talaga? Dapat mag-uusap ang NCIP at sa Department of Education regarding the schools mm -hmm. or the need of schools mm -hmm. and the county sites. Mm -hmm. In fact, I told the president just recently that if there is a need for schools in the mm -hmm. countryside, that will cater to educating the children of the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. It should be done by the Department of Education. education. Mm -hmm. Or if the Department of Education has, does not have the capacity to construct all the schools, mm -hmm. then it should be given to the Department of Public Highways for mm -hmm. them to construct. Or if not, to the engineering brigade. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Pero naupo, but, na, naupo na po ba kayo with all these uh, other departments or agencies to define uh, yung boundaries of responsibilities? Wala pa, wala pa. Kasi ang nangyayari po ngayon, parang magtuturuan yan. Yeah. Dapat ikaw. Mm -hmm. Hindi, dapat ikaw. Eh, sino ba talaga? Paano natin malalaman? Kaya nga, uh, after this, we will be calling on the Department of Education and NCIP. Mm -hmm. Parang malinaw talaga yung, ano, talaga yung boundaries uh, ng trabaho. Not just only the boundaries, but the respective uh, responsibility over any program, mm -hmm. especially on educating our children mm -hmm. belonging to the indigenous people. So ano pong latest ngayon dito sa NCIP? Anong uh, uh, medyo mababago? Kasi may mga promises sila ngayon para mabalik yung kanilang, ano, eh, yung kanilang budget. Eh. Ako naman, I was so confident that once it gets to the Senate, the Senate can uh, oversee, can look into, can review mm -hmm. what had been done by Congress. Mm -hmm. And after which, mag -ano pa yan, mag pa yan, eh, mag mag usap yes, yes. pa yan. So, mm -hmm. I am so positive that that could be restored. Mm -hmm. That could be restored. Pero ngayon po, anong balak ninyo na uh, maging... Uh, polisiya o maging mapatakbo ng ma-implement ng maayos na maaaring in the past ay napabayaan well, sa NCIP. If that's the reason, the big reason why uh, why the Makabayan block had uh, had to uh, to block mm -mm. the uh, budgetary allocation to NCIP, then we've got to sit down on this. And we will call on Department of Education and mm -hmm. the NCIP to look into how we can really protect the mm -hmm. children of the indigenous people in the mm -hmm. countryside. Mm -hmm. Yung HADSI po ba? Kayong may hawak ngayon? Di ganito yung HADSI. It's so complicated yung HADSI. Oh, HADSI, wow. in itself, it is a coordinating body. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called uh, Housing Urban Development Coordinating Cou mm -hmm. Council. Council. Because the one who sits as the chair of HADSI has under him, under him, 
mga anim na mga malalaking malalaking mga ahensya including in its a NHA Socialized Housing Finance Corporation okay nandiyan yung uh, Home Guarantee Corporation mm -hmm. nandiyan yung Pag-ibig nandiyan yung HCLRB yes H oh uh, para ang dami yan but, but the chairman of HADSI does not have the responsibility to micromanage correct correct kasi iba iba lang only ahensya. he only tinkers on the management of that particular agency while he is sitting as chair of the board of, say, in its a board of pag-ibig, board mm -hmm. of... All this board. So, in your case, uh, kasi hindi ba kayo nag-take over kay VP yeah, It's under... <coughs> it's oversight. Okay. It's oversight. Then, while the president... Oversight not, sa lahat na yon. Lahat, lahat, lahat na yan. Lahat, lahat na yun, no. Oh. While the president did not have somebody to sit as the chair, I was temporarily handling as the chairman of HADSI. Okay. And so I was active in uh, sitting as chair of the different board of the different agencies. And until now? No more. The president had, uh, had uh, appointed already uh, uh, General Ed Del Rosario. A retired uh -huh. general. Oh, okay, okay. Siya na who used yun. to work with us in Davao. Mm, siya na ngayon po yung kapalit bali ni VP Lenny. Lenny. Uh -huh. uh, yung uh -huh. position na yun. Yeah. Yun ay nasa uh -huh. kanya ngayon. Uh -huh. uh, so, oh, hindi na ninyo ngayon pinakapakialaman niyo. Yun na. Kasi <clears throat> nandyan naman siya. Mm. Pakialaman ko pa eh. Correct, correct, correct. Yan trabaho correct. niya eh. Mm. Uh -huh. So generally ngayon, ano ho ang uh, pinakalundo ng pinagkakaabalahan ninyo? Kasi uh, parang... Uh, uh, parang ano ba, pa, pa golf golf na lang ba kayo? Uh, I have no time for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, ano po ngayon ang ano nyo? Ano po ngayon ang pinagkaka? Well, I set down uh, ng meetings ng lahat ng 12 agencies. Mm. So, in fact, from here... Dose na lang ba yan? O... Dose. 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 Oh, okay. So, from here, I'll proceed to NFA for the council meeting this morning. Mm. Ah, bakit to? Ano ang uh, kailangan ninyong i-resolve ngayon sa NFA na merong urgency kasi it seems na yun ang bibigyan nyo ngayon ng pansin. It, it has a regular meeting. Lahat ah, sa regular meeting lang board, to. Mga board, mga council has have a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Paminsan, twice a month. Okay. Mayroon ding three times a month. Mm -hmm. Mayroon ding weekly. Mm -hmm. Pero I would rather hope for a twice a month. Parang twice kaya ko magampanan. Sa schedules. Kasi it's not that easy to Correct. be sitting down as the... It's not, you are not just only presiding, mm -hmm. but you are also, you're also giving infusing, your giving your own mind on mm -hmm. certain issues mm -hmm. that will help elucidate the, uh, elucidate the, uh, the issue confronting the agency and mm -hmm. thereby making the right decision, resolution on a certain concern, issue, or problem. So, ano po ang naka-agenda ngayon sa NFA? Uh, a review ng ano, yung ng uh, pagdating ng mga bigas. Procurement Kasi natin. may mga disfortune eh, yung mga bagsakanan ng mga port. Mm -hmm. And then review also the uh, the uh, co coordination with uh, co Bureau of Custom. Bureau of Custom. Kasi mm -hmm. dito naman talaga, kung walang Bureau of Custom, yung smuggling will always be mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi na namin trabaho eh. Hindi na trabaho ng NFA to to guard the different uh, ports mm -hmm. throughout the country. Mm -hmm. Well, the NFA can coordinate from time to time in certain areas, mm -hmm. but the main responsibility rests on the Bureau of Customs. Mm -hmm. Kayo po ay bahagi ng naglalatag ng mga uh, naiisip ninyo ng mga bagay na pwedeng maging pagbabago, i-implement sa bawat ahensya na nasa ilalim ninyo. Tama po ba yan? In a form of policy. Guidelines. Yes. Uh, policy and guidelines. guidelines. Ano ho ang mga bago ngayon na gusto nyong ma-introduce sa TESDA? Sa TESDA, when I was, when I had a meeting with it, ganito din yung TESDA. Opo. TESDA has its own board. Has its own board. Mm -hmm. And the chair of TESDA board is the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. Mm, dole. Mm -hmm. It's oversight pa rin sa akin yan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the responsibility so to get some reports. Mm -hmm. Now, 
One time I called all of them because the president has ordered that the training program of TESDA should be inclusive, should be all-encompassing, meaning to say that TESDA will be a partner of governance in our country that will look into returning OFW. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for all of them, or for those who want to go through the training so that they will be, uh, they will be, they will have that enhanced capacity to work for uh, unemployment in our country when they decide to get back. Mm -hmm. We have to look also into the drug dependents who are going through rehabilitation program. Mm -hmm. Precisely many of these uh, drug dependents are into drugs because they have nowhere to go in terms <coughs> of uh, livelihood. Yes. Ay, isa nga ho yung sinasabi din ng uh, PIDEA na nasa 1% lang daw yung talagang nakaalis na dahil lang nagiging problema na isa is yung kanilang uh, parang reintegration din. Reintegration. Uh, and uh, ang part nga nun po ay yung mga training na dapat na magawa. So meron pala kayong kaya ngayong program nga, with kaya that. Kaya nga, we have to, we have got to uh, mm, grill. Uh, we have got to really tell the people at TESDA that there should be a program that will uh, be, that will cater to the drug dependents going through rehabilitation program. So ngayon po ba wala pang konkretong ganun na program ang TESDA? Meron na, meron na. Ah, okay. Ah, so ah. Ah, paano po ang ano po ang major na component nito? Kasi uh, ito dapat may coordination with the local government, di po ba? Lagi. Of course. Like for example, I was in uh, in my own town. Okay. There is a school set up by Escuela Talier, the mm -hmm. Filipinas Foundation. This is financed by the Spanish government. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the school is set up in a certain place to support restoration work on heritage buildings. Okay. Now, Bohol has one school and that is placed in my town. Mm -hmm. Because in Bohol right now, there is a massive restoration of heritage buildings, churches and other buildings that had collapsed during the earthquake mm. in 2013. Yes, mga historical now, ng... Yung Escuela Talia is now set up in my town. There, there were students who went through the training mm -hmm. for one year. Okay. So as they will be, they will be uh, introduced to skills like uh, carpentry, masonry, sculpturing, painting, production of uh, tiles, and mm. everything. Eh, su supported yan ng uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish government? Spanish government. So sila nagpopondo po? Sila nagpopondo dito. Okay. And it is run as a foundation mm -hmm. headed by Chairman Dr. Jaime Laya. Ah, okay. And the executive director is architect Bulaong, Cristina mm -hmm. Bulaong. The graduation doon sa Maribuhok, where I think half of the students were dra former drug dependents. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was so touched when I saw them one time that these were young women, young people, mm -hmm. who were really very intense in learning the skills mm -hmm. in uh, sculpturing, in woodworks, mm -hmm. in woodworks, in stoneworks, whose skills would be needed. Uh, in the near future. Pero sila ba yung priority po dito? Yung mga uh, nagre-rehab? Dapat yung, sa akin no, personally, yes. I would rather get uh, people who, who, who went through the rehabilitation program and put them in this uh, training program so that they will find a place in our society. Mm -hmm. uh, hindi nila masabi na they are neglected. They're oh. just being set aside. May pupuntahan sila. May pupuntahan so, sila eh. Mm. Kaya nga eh, pumasok sila sa droga eh, dahil sabi nila, wala namang gano'n mong pupuntahan. Mm -hmm. So instead now of working something very uh, meaningful, mm -hmm. so how do you drugs. how do you intend to introduce that sa TESDA in the national scope? In national scope, mm -hmm. they have to coordinate with the mayors. Uh -huh. They've have got to coordinate yes, with the yes, local, local government. Because the, the local government will be the one to determine. Will Saka sila may kampanya to, to for that. Uh -huh. <coughs> who should be trained? Who should go through that kind of training? Pero sino po ang magbabudget? Where will the budget come The budget come comes from? from TESDA. 
Okay. It has a big budget. This so, ilalaglag na lang sa local government? Local government yan. For the local government to access. But that will also depend on the rehabilitation program of a specific municipality or city. Kasi hindi naman sabihin mo na, okay, mayroon kami yung training. Correct, correct, correct. What is the context of the training? If the context of the training is something to do with out-of-school youth or those young people going through a rehabilitation program in connection with drugs, then PES does get to support that. So ano po ang status ngayon yan? Gumagalaw ba? Kasi ang problema ngayon natin dito... Uh, yung mga local government coordinations natin dahil meron silang program nilang sarili, i-incorporate lang yung sa TESDA. Well, in fact, uh, the President o Mayor Duterte is set to meet again in a series of meetings of the mayors throughout the country. With TESDA? <coughs> of course, TESDA will be there. Okay, so ito na po yung i-introduce nila doon, yung sa mga program ng, so, ng uh, mayors. mayors. So ano ang order ninyo with regard to the implementing uh, uh, regulations from TESDA? Kasi, syempre magpo-pondo sila dyan. How do you screen? Kasi si, ang, magi, ang, ang kapartner na ninyo, local government eh. That is now, that is now the responsibility of TESDA okay. and the local government. Oh, so, sila na magde-determine kung magkano ay pupondo. Kasi after all, TESDA has its own, uh, its own offices at the regional level, yes. the provincial, the city mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So, dyan ang pag-uusap ng local government. Mm -hmm. So, yung local government may programs of training mm -hmm. uh, uh, galing sa TESDA. Then, all he has got to do is go to the TESDA provincial uh, chief mm -hmm. or to the city mm -hmm. TESDA. It has something to do with uh, barangays. Mm -hmm. You were also known as the rebel priest. Tama po ba yun? Pwede bang, kasi dati kayong parang pare na rebelde, tapos ngayon nandito kayo sa gobyerno na nagkakaroon ng problema sa usapang pangkapayapaan with the rebels. Ano ba ang thoughts niya? Before you answer that, we'll pause for another break. Babalik po kami. There might be... And preserved. Ito ang programang Bawal ang Pigon! Maganda talaga. Hindi nagbabago ang level. Maganda talaga yung tating ng kape na yan. Kasi nung isang araw, medyo gumaganon yung ano eh. Medyo mahina si pa eh. Diba? Balik po tayo. Kasama pa rin natin, of course, si Secretary uh, June Evasco, ang ating uh, Cabinet uh, Secretary. Uh, Di ba, rebel priest kayo dati at uh, ngayon may problema tayo sa usapang pangkapayapaan. Have you given the President uh, yung inyo pong uh, thought dito sa uh, sistema ngayon na <coughs> nagiging problema natin sa peace talks? Uh, it has always been a piece of discussion in the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Because the president will always have to look into the uh, Philippines, which is freed from insurgency, freed from uh, groups longing to secede from our country. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look into why there are insurgent groups, there are groups advocating for secessionism. These are groups who really have to look into the grievances, the longings of our people for change or a government that will respond to their needs, basic needs in life. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, uh, people still think, and I still think, that we still have a long way to go if we can come up with a government that is responsive to the needs of our people. Mm -hmm. And that precisely is the president would want to happen. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are a lot of Uh, impediments. There are a lot of impediments. Oh, kasi po, sabi nyo nga, kailangan mo, ang gobyerno mo responsive mm -hmm. doon sa dahilan kung bakit merong nagre-rebelde. Mm -hmm. Eh, kayo ho, nagre-rebelde kayo dati. Oh. Yung bang dahilan ng pagre-rebelde ninyo dati, nakikita nyo bang nire-respondihan ngayon ng ating administrasyon? Or is it being addressed the way you think during the time that you were a rebel, Eh, would uh, be addressed. In fact, I would tell you uh, frankly, wala pa. 
we are still in the process. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are still calling for a change in government. In mm -hmm. fact, the president is calling for a change in government. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if the president wants to do things, wants to make things happen, he still have to confront with age-old laws, mm -hmm. guidelines and policies, guidelines ng kuwa, which will not make this longing, this vision happen. Mm -hmm. Because people down will always tell you that hindi natin pwede ito, i-shortcut natin dahil mayroon tayong mayroon mga batas, mayroon mga guidelines and uh, policies that will have also to safeguard that money that money should be always be spent uh, with accountability. Mm -hmm. Money should be spent in a transparent manner. Mm -hmm. So ito yung mga hadlang eh. Mm -hmm. na you cannot just do things fast. Ano po ba yung dahilan ninyo primarily dati? Ba't kayo nagrebelde? Well, it's something to do with our own mm, outlook in life. Mm -hmm. That the church, that the state should always be uh, focused to uh, helping the poor people. Mm -hmm. Nangyayari ho ba ngayon yun? Hindi pa. So, magre-rebelde pa rin kayo kung sakali? Of pala, course, I'm still a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Bakit nasa gobyerno kayo? I would want to, to be a rebel again. To oh. contribute to what I think could be done to our people. Uh huh. Now I'm, I'm in government now. Okay. In fact, if I run smack with some people in government, it's because there are, pe there are people in government who insist in the culture of corruption. I insist also doing things which are account with accountability in and do things with transparency. So ngayon nakikita niyo talaga. Inaamin nyo, talagang marami kayo nakakabangga ngayon na nasa gobyerno? Marami naman na hindi, hindi isang ayon eh. Uh -oh. Pero there are a lot of things in doing how you would relate these people. Mm -hmm. You also have to educate them regarding what should be done. So kasi if, if it comes from somebody like you mm -hmm. who is now working with the government, mm -hmm. na sinasabi ninyo na they still have the reason to rebel mm -hmm. against the government, Eh, di ba, the more na parang masasabi ninyo ngayon, ma tama lang ginagawa ng mga nagre-rebelde, gano'n ba? Tama naman talaga eh. Uh -huh. Kaya it is a pressure also on whoever is sitting at Malacanang to really look into the complaints of these people. Mm -hmm. That's why the president is really trying to balance things out. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi naman pwede na ito gagawin mo. Mm -hmm. ito gagawin mo. You've got to balance so, the tama ba ngayon, different forces. Gin, tama ba ngayon ginagawa ng mga rebelde na habang nag-uusapan pang kapayapaan, habang minsan may ceasefire, pinap pinapatay na si gobyerno? <coughs> And then naman, both sides naman napatayan eh. Oo, oh, <laughs> dahil pumapatay na napapatay din naman, ganun. So, <laughs> both uh, sides naman talaga eh. How do you look at it po ngayon dun sa uh, situation natin? Kasi parang hindi natin, par uh, pag tinanong mo yung mga tao, matutuloy kaya ang peace talks? Yung iba, sabi kasi ni Presidente Duterte, ayoko na makipag-usap sa inyo. Tapos mamaya, meron na namang, sige, tingnan natin. Alam mo, the, the government has got to insist on anything. Huh? Resolution of insurgency, resolution of secessionism within the context of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Well, ito namang mga insurgent groups where I used to belong, mm -hmm. at saka itong mga secessionist group ngayon, mm -hmm. will have their own way of saying, uh, ganito yung gagawin, gagawin natin. Mm -hmm. Ito talaga yung uh, locus or a place where magbanggaan talaga. Mm -hmm. Kasi a lot of their proposals would not be within the context of the constitutional provisions. Correct, correct, correct. correct. Eh, ito talaga. So, paano ngayon so, yun? Ta ito talaga. Okay it, na lang. Papatayan na lang tayo. It is an ongoing talk. It oh. is an ongoing talk. Kaya lang, ang Presidente would tell them na habang nag-uusap tayo to resolve a lot of kinks, mm -hmm na hindi tayo nagka, nagkaliwanagan dito, huwag muna yung patayan. Mm -mm. Huwag yung patayan dito, huwag yung patayan dito. Mm -mm. Para tuloy-tuloy yung... Eh ano. kaso nga po, eh, ganun pa rin. Patayan pa rin ang patayan. Oh. Kaya hindi naman... It is now incumbent the president if he really uh, intends to really resolve this age-old uh, insurgency. Talagang sabihin niya, o sige, hindi tayo patayan dito, hindi mo patayan dito. Mm -mm. And unfortunately, parang wala nang listening ear mm -mm. on both sides. Mm -mm. So this will all go to naught? It will go all to naught if on both sides will not listen to the president. Which is happening. Kaya nga eh. So, uh, ako naman, will give time to the president to think it over.
Mm -mm. And for him to really decide once and for all mm -mm. kung ano talaga ito. Kasi po, noong kayong nagre-rebelde, alam ninyo hindi kayo masyado napapakinggan with what uh, you're uh, saying. Hindi po ba ganun? Pero ngayon naman, eh, yung president is open naman to talk. In fact, they've been in and out of... Exactly. Kanya, so no? now, let's say, you put yourself as the rebel again, uh, and the, the rebel priest. What will you tell the president para gawin niya na huwag ka nang mag-rebelde? There should be some kind of uh, the president who should tell the NPAs, the Communist Party of the Philippines, the NDF na ganito. And I will tell also the armed forces, the police na ganito para mabigyan talaga ng uh, focus yung pag-uusap. But Manong Jun, hindi ba wishful thinking yan? I mean, I, I will tell, I am the president, I will tell these insurgents that you do this. They are not listening. Eh. Because if you cannot tell them, and they will continue in doing things which will just derail the talks, walang mangyayari. Eh, ganun ganun yung, din yung, that's the reality, Manong Jun, di ba? Na nangyayari ngayon. Kaya, kung yan ang reality, then wala talagang mangyayari. It will keep on pestering our people. Mm -hmm. Because in fighting, there will be victims. Yung victims correct, dito, correct. yung mga IPs, yung mga tao on the country sides. Mm -hmm. When yung magmaka na dyan, it will result to evacuation. Evacuation will result to uh, an infusion of funds to feed the evacuees. Mm -hmm. Well, following your thought, eh, hindi po ba lilitaw niya na we will never see the end of this? Kaya nga eh. Hindi talaga. Mm -hmm. Hindi talaga. Mm -hmm. So parang kahit sino mo po, kahit ano pa, mm -hmm. galing na nga na dyan, walang Kasi mangyayari. Kung, if its group will insist mm -mm. In what they think is right, without looking into what is right as claimed by the other side, mm -mm. alang mangyari. Eh, which yan ngayon yung nangyayari talaga. Ganito yan. Still meet yan. Ngayon. Exactly. So uh, how do we uh, pick it up? And no. do, uh, how should we go about that and start para kung sakali ay mapunta tayo dun sa linya na dapat natin talagang Ako naman, I always have to work with uh, the President. Kung anong sabihin ni President na ganito yung gagawin natin because I always have to trust the President na at the end of the day, he will think in accordance to the expectation of people mm -hmm. talagang ma matigil na itong mga away. Trust his uh, wisdom uh, oh, uh, dito sa ganito. But uh, with, uh, with, with these things na hindi naman nakikinig din yung mm -hmm. Uh, sa kabila, parang kahit na gusto mo, walang hmm. mangyayari. Hindi ka nang pwede mag-impose. O, oh, ganun. Were you a victim of martial law as well? Hmm. <laughs> Totoo ba yung na-torture kayo? Ganun man talaga, no? Ano po, kinoriente kayo sa bayag? Ganun ba? Ganun naman. It's... <laughs> Matindi? Matindi. Oh. Ano, sino nag-torture sa inyo? Of course, the state forces. Uh -huh. Hindi naman si Marcos mag-torture sa iyo eh. Correct, correct, correct. So, mga, mga sundalo to. <laughs> sundalo. Uh -huh. So, mabuti na lusutan ninyo yun. I was still young at that time. Uh -huh. And physically able. Uh -huh. Yung mga torture. Uh -huh. Pero, uh, uh, were you close to this that time? I think so. Uh -huh. Alright. So, so, ito yung experiences ninyo na ito. Uh, kasi ngayon, ang lecture na ngayon sa mga skwelahan about martial law, Parang ang martial law is evil. Uh, being also a victim of martial law, do you perceive martial law uh, as uh, an evil or as a tool also for a sitting president to rule uh, ng maayos? Uh, kung hindi, ba't di pa natin alisin sa konstitusyon? Ganito yon. Kung evil yung martial law, bakit nandyan sa konstitusyon? Exactly. I don't see reason why that thing called martial law should be within these constitutional provisions mm -hmm. to be resorted at by a sitting president. If it is evil, then mm -hmm. there must Correct. be something good in it Correct. as a tool to curb, to check, to resolve a very big problem confronting the security of the nation. So the you believe that, that? I believe in that. Oh, even if you were a victim of martial law, it is not actually the martial law that is evil, but it is the one who is imposing it or actually being, uh, parang who manipulates kung ano yung nasa within the frames yeah. of the law. Mm. Kasi yung premise dito eh, that martial law is good. Mm -mm. Now, if it is good, 
that could be resorted by a sitting president, then it should be within that very basic law which we call constitution. But is that the way you think our children and the, the, this generation is being educated about martial law? I don't think so. Uh -huh. I don't think so. Because we're concentrating only of martial law as being done by President Marcos. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking of martial law as a concept, which is a very good concept that could be used by a president, by an administration, if only to protect the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hindi ba niyo nakikita na merong dapat na itono dito, especially in terms of, one, information dissemination, two, education, and uh, yung uh, pagbibigay ng uh, tamang konteksto nito sa mga tao. Kasi uh, lahat ngayon, lalo yung mga kabataan, pag tinanong mo, oy, martial law, iba na yung pananaw nila. I don't think there is an objective presentation of what, what martial, martial law is all about to our children. Mm -hmm. It is a presentation <clears throat> based on how a victor, how a ruling class would want the children to absorb. Yes. So, nakikita nyo ngayon yun? Ah, kita ko yan. So, nakikita ba ninyo, one way or the other, that uh, mayroong brainwashing na sa young generation when it comes to what is martial law? Ganun man talaga. Whoever would be sitting. Uh, kasi, whether you like, you like it or not, it is always, the, the one setting would always be reflective on the interest of whoever is ruling our country. Mm -hmm. Yung mga mayaman. Mm -hmm. What should the government do now? Kasi di po ba, di po ba ito, pagkaganya may mga problema, nakikita mo that affects, kasi mabigat yung pagka yung isip ang ano eh, ang uh, namanipula eh. Uh, uh, at kung nakikita natin may epektong ganito, hindi ba kailangan may gawin ang gobyernong hakbang dito para hindi uh, mapunta tayo doon sa maling mga konsepto at paniniwala? Kaya si Duterte is trying to get out of its shell na itong gobyerno is controlled by the oligarchs. Mm -hmm. Duterte is getting out, but in the process of getting out, may mga hadlang dyan. Mm -hmm. Because there will be definitely sectors, classes, that will be threatened mm -hmm. when Duterte gets out of that mold that this government is representative of the oligarch. Mm -hmm. So nakikita niyo ba ngayon na gumagana ngayon yung pampigil na yan ng mga oligarchs? Well, as I said, Duterte is going to that direction. Mm -mm. But along the way, even mm, people whom we are so close in governance are trying to block. Mm -hmm. Kasi hindi na kilala si Duterte. So you're saying there are those people na nakapaligid din sa presidente? Mm -hmm. na... Uh, hindi din kumbinsido eh. <laughs> uh, doon sa ginagawa ng presidente. Uh, although they're there because they're assigned a certain work. Uh -huh. And uh, have you helped the president identify them? Uh, Or does he know it? Ganun naman yung presidente. He's so smart. He knows. Uh, He's so smart enough. Uh, pero being a friend also to the president, what was the, uh, sabihin na po natin, uh, biggest advice that you have given him na kasi confidante niya kayo eh. Hindi naman kayo... Well, I had the big opportunity to talk to the president during the campaign. Okay. And back as early as 20... Early 2015. Still going around the country. Mm, one time in Cebu, I told him, I don't see any problem for you not winning. We can make you win. mm mm, -mm. But the problem is when you win, we will be confronted with a lot of things, a lot of problems, because there will be people whom we will be getting to work with us are not convinced, are not convinced internally. Mm -hmm. Well, they may, be, they may be telling you, oh, okay, Rod, okay, and, 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 but internally, their interests are being affected, being threatened. Mm -hmm. So these are the people who will uh, undermine you, Right. Marami naman talaga eh, mm -mm. undermining the president. Mm -mm -mm. Marami ni, eh, because they don't expect that the governance of Duterte would not be responsive also to their class interest, mm -mm. to their sectoral interest. Mm -mm. Pero isa kayo sa may pinakamalaking kasalanan dito, di ba? 
<laughs> oh, bakit naging presidente si President Duterte? <laughs> Dahil, kaya yung ano eh, wala pang hindi pa nagdedeklara, umiikot na kayo eh. At, at kayo, kayo yung pinakamaraming... Umiikot naman kami dahil nag, nagbenta kami ng idea on federalism. Mm -hmm. Ano naman talaga? Ay, yes, yes. Kasimple eh. But unfortunately, hindi naman ganun kasimple yung utak ng tao. Correct, 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 correct. Because they will now be connecting federalism to a lot of things. Yes. Hanggang, oh, pwede ka na magpresidente. Uh -oh. So, who But, not be titillated with that? Pero kayo yung uh, masasabi nyo na internally, uh, with all your heart, you are convinced with the President Duterte. Very much. Oh, kasi... Uh, Otherwise, I would not be working with him. At saka, ganun ka bigat yung ano nyo eh. Lintik ang pangangampanya nyo talaga nung uh, mga panahon eh. Pero ngayon, na naaharap na sa ganitong problema ang, uh, ang ating uh, Presidente, ano ho ngayon ang nakikita na inyong pinakamagandang solusyon na kanyang gawin dahil kasi siyempre there should always be an answer to this problem. Well, first, the president must continue listening to people which he's doing right now. In fact, <clears throat> yesterday he was in Marawi and next day he will be in Samar talking to people whose expectations whose expectations for rehabilitation during that typhoon Yolanda are not yet met. Mm -mm. So we will be there to, to listen to people. And well, not just only listening but do something to respond well, to what well, you've heard. Uh, well, Manong Jun, uh, no doubt that the President listens. Uh. Po ba? But do you think that the President uh, listens to the right people? Mm. Hindi naman, hindi naman sabihin uh, ka, Daniel, na hindi ako, uh, hindi ako, ma I am not going to listen to you. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who'd access, who'd get near you and tell you something. Mm -hmm. That is listening. Yes, pero... But you, I'll, cannot, I'll... You, you cannot discriminate people. Eh. No, but what I'm uh, saying, kasi when we say we no, listen, no. iba ho kasi yung... Uh, na, di, pinakinggan ka lang kesa sa dinidinig ka. Sabi ng kasabihan Tagalog, iba daw yung tinitingnan hmm. sa tinititigan. Hmm. So, pagka sinabi natin pinakikinggan, uh. ibig sabihin ay hindi nakinig lang, kundi pinakikinggan uh. niya and he really believes in these people. Na uh. pina sa tingin ba ninyo, pinaniniwalaan, ang mga pinaniniwalaan ngayon ng presidente ay mga tamang tao? Uh, o meron din siyang mga napapaniwalaan na hindi tama? Well, well, I can tell you only is that the president listens. Now, it is now his responsibility to look into the things that he had listened and do something about it. Kung nakikita naman niya yung na, na, napakinggan niya tama, mm -mm. then that is now his responsibility to do it as a response to the needs of our people. Mm -mm. Kasi we cannot just dictate on the president. Yes, pero kayo mukhang basan yung galaw ng presidente. One way or the other, naiintindihan nyo siya. Tama po yun? Of course. So, you understand where he is coming from when he say something. Uh, ano ho ang pananaw nyo doon sa ba't siya nagsinungaling doon sa account ni Trillanes para mahuli daw niya si Trillanes? Ano bang ano niyo po? He did that. He did that intentionally. Yes. Hindi naman siya nagsinungaling. It is some kind of... Inimbento niya lang. Hindi, in-invento. Siya, nagsabi yun, in-invento niya eh. Yeah, in-invento dahil he would want to catch Trillanes. So how do you think he would catch Trillanes by doing such invento? Well, it is incumbent on him his own strategy. Uh -huh. May strategy siya eh. Na it is not just being open to anybody. Kasi I want to prove that you have an account. That's uh -huh. why I gave you a false account. Uh -huh. And then now you're proving that it is not your account. Wherein I know that you will be able to prove that it is not really your account because that account is only invented by me. Yeah, uh, nakinig ka naman eh. Mm -hmm. Ako, nakinig ako sa sinasabi ng presidente. Mm -hmm. Which I was not a party to the formulation of such strategy. Mm -hmm. All I have got to do is listen and believe in him. Mm -hmm. So, you agree with that? I mean, kung kayo tatanungin, Would you advise him to do the same? Mm, it depends on the situation. Kasi yung situation, 
when he did that, mm -mm. it was a situation that he was confronted with. Mm -mm. But iba yung situation na magkukonfront sa akin, mm -mm. whereby I have got to come up with my own strategy mm -mm. on how to on how to confront with such problem. Mm -mm. Yung closeness niyo ba ng presidente, napapagsabihan niyo ba siya dati? Nung, nung di pa siya presidente, yung bang napapagsabihan, uh, mayor, parang, di, na, na, nagaganon niyo ba siya? Ganoon naman, sabi ko kanina, na, mm -mm. While we were in Davao, we do have a lot of times that we can talk with each other. Napapagsabihan niyo siya? Yeah, sabi ko, uh, baka hindi tama yan, Mayor, ganito. Nakikinig uh, naman sa inyo? Nakikinig naman. Mm -hmm. But hindi naman sasabihin na right there and then sasabihin niya because his type is, John, anong tingin mo sa ganitong problema? Anong mm -hmm. tingin mo? So I tell him na ganito, ganito, ganito. At the end of the day, he decides. And that is now Duterte deciding on the matter. What's the most unsolicited advice that you have given him? Hindi ko na matandaan. Pero you, being a rebel priest, did you tell him na, huwag ka naman mura ng mura? Meron mo bang ganun? Ako, nagmumura man ako. Ikaw pala nang influence. Kasi part yun ang teatrix eh. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I have been a mayor for nine years in my town. Kasama na dyan, putay, gano'n. Kasi yung mga tao, hindi makinig sa'yo kung siya, pare, gano'n ito. Murahin mo talaga. Meron talaga gano'n siya. Kaya lang doon sa amin, hindi man... So naninigaw ka din pala? Oo, maninigaw ka. Kasi you've got to instill fear. I would rather people believe in me because they're afraid rather than... They have to love me. Ah, bakit? Kasi wala na mong mangyari na sabi mo, oi dong, ganito dong, gagawin mo to dong. Ganito dong, ganito. Wala mangyari. Ah, okay. Putangin na. Yawan. Oh, ganon ganon. Ganon talaga yawan. Ah, let's see. So ikaw palang ano? Ikaw palang promotor na? Ah, baka nakatugma lang yung mga style namin. Ah, okay. So ilan babae nyo? Ah. Ah, uh, isa, dalawa. Ang, uh, yung anak nyo, ibisa? Anak po, babae, at saka asawa. Asawa nyo, babae. Oh, galing. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> so, wala. <laughs> wala, wala, wala sa akin. <laughs> Pero, ano ang most intimate moment nyo po with uh, the president? Uh, during the time ng kinukumbinsin nyo siya na tumakbo na presidente. Hmm. Kasi, kayo yung isa sa mga ano eh, isa talaga sa mga promotor niyan eh. Oh. There was one time he called me up. I was already mayor in Maribuho. Mm -hmm. I think that was 20, 2013. Mm -hmm. Immediately after election 2013, I was a re-elected mayor at that time. Yes. Ay, John, punta ko dyan, John. Eh, ikot, ikot. Eh, may natin niya. Sabi ko, I will act as your driver. Okay. Ako nag-drive. Sa, 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 Dalawa lang kayo? Ibong ko. Oh, okay. uh, it was at the time when I told him that you have to run for president because mm -hmm. you will win. Okay. And not just only winning, but you will become a very good president. Okay. Yan lang. And then I argue. Bakit you will become a good president? I argue on the basis of my position that he will win. Bakit manalo siya? At saka bakit magiging maayos na presidente siya? At the end of the day, typical Duterte. Sabi niya, ayaw ko ang magtagpo. Ayaw ko. Pero ako naman, alam ko na eh. Alam ko na yung mga style na yun. Alam ko na yung style. Hindi na yung presidente na ngayon. Pero yung kung ganyan nga moment ninyo, Were you able to joke on something also na when you become a president? Kasi yung mga barkada, ganun, di ba? O pag naging presidente ka, costumes akin na, yung mga tipong ganun. Meron bang ganun moment? Ako, baka tutuuhin eh. Pero may ganun ba? Alam mo, alam mo. Eh, typical Duterte. Yes. Sabi niya, kasi he was offered one time. Okay. During the presidency of Erap, I was on his side when Erap called him to be the Bureau of Custom Commissioner. Abi ni, 
sabi ni Duterte sa akin, John, ito ang hirap ng tawag. Gusto sabi ko, Rod, huwag mong tanggapin yan, Rod. Mm-hmm. Dahil, kung tanggapin mo yan, na if you get back to run for mayor, kasi at the time he was the congressman, eh, at the time, yes. when you get back to the local government to run for mayor, nobody will believe in you that you did not make money. Kahit wala kang tinatanggap. Mm-mm. Kaya lang yung kultura ng custom, whoever sits there, makes money. Mm-mm. Sabi niya, kaya nga eh, kung sino yung mag-advise sa akin na tanggapin ang posisyon sa Bureau of Custom, sabi niya, Mm-mm. hindi natin siya kaibigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, eh ngayon, kung ibigay siya yung custom. Huh? Marami pa mga galing. Sabi ko, nas Daniel Rason, no? mas magaling ko sa akin. Kala ko pa naman, kaibigan kita. <laughs> Tin- tinutulak mo ako sa kumunoy. <laughs> so, paano ngayon yan? E eh, nandun ngayon si La Peña. Mag- magaling naman si La Peña eh. Oh, pero, hmm. ang impression pa rin, kumuha pa rin siya. Ha? Kukuha pa rin Kailang, siya. That's the culture. Yes. Now it is no incumbent on La Pina to prove otherwise. Mm-hmm. Which oh. is, you think, a Herculean task? It is a Herculean task. Pero hindi naman imposible. Uh-huh. Hindi naman po imposible. I know the guy. I know the person. I know Sid La Pina. Mm-hmm. He has the capacity to do it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, more or less, kayo magkakabarikada. Please tell me, uh, kabarikada niyo din si Sueño, di ba? Ganito. Ah... Uh, I, I came to know Mike Suenio. Mm. PDP used to be governor of uh, South Cotabato. Mm. Yun lang. And then we met again during election. Mm. Yun lang. So, pero si Pete, close nyo talaga? Ah, si Pete. We have been working with Pete sa local government. Close nyo talaga si Pete. In fact, I was, one, I was the one who recommended uh, to Mayor Duterte for Pete to work sa city government. Mm, but uh, you think Pete became a victim of something else? Mm, hindi mo na ako mag-comment. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Well, like, uh, matandain pa rin kayo, ha? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> ano soft spot mo, uh, Manong Jude? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Parin sa iyo. <laughs> <laughs> si Presidente Duterte, ano soft spot niya? Hmm... Sinasabi naman niya eh. Mm-hmm. Sinasabi niya, I don't have to be labor on that again. Mm-hmm. Wala naman tinatago sa presidente eh. Mm-hmm. Lahat ng anong gusto niya, anong hindi gusto niya, sinasabi niya niya eh. Pero ano yung, uh, what, will you, what do you think will parang uh, uh, dudurog, ng, madaling dumurog ng puso ng presidente? He's really compassionate. Dali maawa. Mm-hmm. Dali maawa. Mm-hmm. Kaya yung programs namin doon sa Davao at the time, We're directed towards children, women, uh, yung matanda. Mm-mm. Talaga, dyan talaga nag, ano, nag-allocate ng malaking pera Mm-mm. para sa mga kabataan. Babalik ka pa bang mayor? Mm, wala na. In fact, uh, I don't have to work. Had it not been for the president asking me to work with him. Mm-mm. I don't need to work. Kasi, meron mga kompensyon eh. Mm. Kahit maliit yan, mm, In our, in in the time where we are uh, getting old, we don't have many needs in our life. What would make you leave? Uh, ano? Uh, what would make you leave uh, the president? Uh? Ano ang uh, pwedeng magpaiwan sa iyo sa kanya? Ano ang pwedeng dahilan para iwanan mo si president? Well, if I no longer convinced of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. If what is doing still, I believe that it is still in accordance to the expectations for people. Kasi during the campaign, we went around. Nari- nakinig talaga kami at saka narinig namin ano yung gusto ng mga tao. So you will never resign? No. So kung... Unless the president asks me to resign. Mm-hmm. Or if I will no longer uh, be physically be able to help him out. So yun lang ah yun lang ah pero pagka nalbawa okay ka naman wala naman no tapos na dinig ko sa balita <clears throat> nagresign si uh, 
uh, Secretary June Evasco, di, hindi totoo yan. Hindi Sab totoo yan. Sabi yun, pinag-resign. Lalo na ako mag-resign na magtakbo ng gobyerno, hindi totoo yan. <laughs> Congressman lang. <laughs> o mayor lang ulit. O, oh, meron tayong reaction dito sa ating Facebook bago kita pakawalan, Secretary, dahil ano, merong nag-like sa'yo na 992. May nag-love-love-love sa'yo ng 306. May natawa sa'yo na 37. May nag-wow sa'yo na siyam. At merong isang malungkot. Ba't kaya siya malungkot? At may tatlong galit. <laughs> Sino kaya yan? <laughs> Alam ko. Na, uh, uh. Ah, galing ah! <laughs> o, oh, isa lang, isa lang. Bigyan mo ako isa lang. Oh, isa lang. Yung pop, posible. Asawa ko. <laughs> Kasi, pag river start, ayaw niya magpunta ko dito. Ganun? Uh, Bakit naman? Kasi ayaw niya ma-expose ako eh. <laughs> Kaya, kasi sabi ko nang kanya na, kaibigan ko si... Kadanil. Sana sinabi ito si Jerry. Akala ko, akala ko sinabi mo sa kanya. Yan ang hirap sa iyo, nag-asawa ka ng guwapo. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, really appreciate it, Secretary. Maraming maraming salamat po for being with us. Salamat po. Thank you. Secretary Leoncio June Evasco Jr., ang ating pong cabinet secretary dito sa programang Bawal ang Pikon. Get straight, Peter, get yourself!